Yes, uh, Milemba. Honorable Shinali, retreat quietly and dress up and come back. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the business before this House is one which requires us to vote on the nomination of a person to fill a vacancy in the office of the Deputy President in terms of Article 149 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, as is a practice before the House takes a vote on a matter, members are accorded an opportunity to debate and give their views on the business before the House. Honorable Speaker, to this end I seek your guidance on whether we shall be given an opportunity to debate on the nomination and, and give our views. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Wangwe. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to seek your uh, guidance on whether the, this House will be required, Honorable Speaker, to undertake the vetting and approval process as required by the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act. So, number two, Honorable Speaker, of my concern is that, Honorable Speaker, Article 124, particularly subsection 4 of the Constitution, provides that when a House of Parliament considers any appointment for which its approval is required under the Constitution or an Act of Parliament, the appointment shall be considered by a committee of the relevant House and the committee's recommendation shall be tabled in the House of Approval. Honorable Speaker, in your communication, you have not given us indication on how you are going to handle that process. Maybe, Honorable Speaker, you can guide, guide me on how you intend to handle it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Jen Kagiri. Yes, member for Laikipia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you've just con conveyed a message from His Excellency the President on the nomination of Professor Kithure Kindiki uh, to fill the vacancy of the office of the Deputy President, uh, which occurred yesterday, uh, uh, to fill the vacancy of the office of the Deputy President, which occurred yesterday following the conclusion of the impeachment proceedings at the Senate. Honorable Speaker, we are now here to vote on the nomination as required by the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, could you please guide the House on whether we are acting within the constitutional deadline? And is it in order for the nomination to happen today after receiving the notification from the President today? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. With those clarifications sought by members after the House business committee meeting. Honorable members, I will now uh, require the deputy speaker to come to the chair and carry on with the proceedings. Members of the House business committee move to room nine for a meeting whereafter we will resume the proceedings of the House and I'll guide the issues raised by Honorable Pukose, Jen Gakiri, uh, Wangwe, and Omboko Milemba at the next resumption. Yes, uh, what's your point of order, Honorable? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to join my very good friend, uh, the Honorable Pukose. Uh, in seeking your direction, Mr. Speaker, with regard to Article 149 of the Constitution on the appointment of uh, and approval by a vote of the Deputy President. Mr. Oh, Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker, the words of the Constitution are very clear. Yes. It is appointment and vote. And vote. I approval agree. is not used. Yes, not used, Mr. On Speaker. On this article. Mr. Speaker, you know. This constitution we are borrowed heavily from the U.S. Constitution. The 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which was passed in 1967, has a similar provision that provides that a deputy, a vice president, shall be appointed, shall be nominated by the president, and vote, approved by a vote by the House. It, it uses the words confirmation, Mr. Speaker. Previously in the United States, Mr. Speaker, before the 25th Amendment, there was no similar provision 
In fact, there was uh, in the past, before 1967, there was a cumulative of 37 years when there was no vice president, when one either passed away or one was appointed as the, became the president. And so, Mr. Speaker, we, we would like you to express yourself with regard to this issue. What is the threshold? On the removal of the deputy president is two-thirds. So is the approval or by vote of the deputy president two-thirds? Because it's not provided in the, in, in the Constitution. Honorable Chief Konda. Yes. If you are paying attention, you are saying exactly what Bukose said. Oh, I'd and you are out. sitting next to him. No, no, I walked out, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I walked out. So, so word yeah. for word, what are you asking me to oh, say? Yeah, he, he has stolen from me, Mr. Oh. Speaker. <laughs> yes. Yes, Wamboka. DK. If you want to catch the speaker's eye, there's no provision for you to stand up. You sit and I'll <coughs> give you. Yes, Wamboka, member for Bumula. Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, Article 118 of the Constitution requires this House to facilitate public participation in its legislative and other business of the House. Honorable Speaker, the issue of public participation is a sensitive matter which has often attracted debate and court challenges. Indeed, our recent experience in considering the special motion for removal of the Deputy President made us even appreciate better the need for public participation. Honorable Speaker, with this in mind, please guide this House on whether we shall be expected to conduct public participation in voting for the nomination to fill the vacancy in the office of the Deputy President. Thank you. DK. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising on a point of order, on, on, still on the same uh, issue that I need your guidance. Looking at His Excellency, the nominee, we just vetted not more than two months ago, and that implies not more than six months ago. And the questionnaire that is expe expected is still the questionnaire that we used. Why don't we use the same motion and we use the same output, and we just put the motion, and we put the question, and we finish today. Thank you. Daud. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, it's great that uh, Honorable Kidore Kindiki has been nominated by the President. My question is, uh, Mr. Speaker, will, the, will IBC have to be involved as the same was done during the election, or it is not a factor in this case. While I congratulate uh, Kidore Kindiki for nomination. Donya, what is it? Uh, Mr. Speaker. On the same issue? Yeah, on the same issue. Go ahead. Uh, he's saying that you use the same questionnaire that he used as the interior for the position of the deputy president. He's incorrect because you cannot. Uh, use the, the, the same questions when it is a, a different uh, docket. It's out of order. Uh, Thank Mr. you for speaker. helping the speaker. <laughs> yes, member for Langata. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Having seen how things move very fast in this house, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the newly appointed deputy president. Order, order Jalango. He has not been appointed. He has been nominated. I've just said on how things move very fast here, sir. <laughs> Let me congratulate him. Let me be the first person to congratulate the newly elected deputy president. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You can come now. Eh? No, come and take the seat. Yes. Honorable members, we'll end this here. I'll make some reason the direction on those issues raised. I will now ask all members of the House Business Committee, Kainan and your team, to move to room nine for a meeting. And we'll
The deputy speaker will go on with the statements. I had not given direction on the member for Moyale's statement. It's committed to the committee responsible and to bring a response in two weeks.